What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another Back for Blood deck build video and today we're going to be talking about the money guy. We're all about the copper with this deck and supporting the team in full. We're talking about inventory slots, we're talking about keeping some health on us to maintain our survivability with this build and adding a little bit of DPS as well as holding a bit more ammunition for in case anybody runs out. You're all about supporting the team with this build. It's going to be a huge help for a lot of people in veteran and if you'd like to copy and paste this deck, obviously I have a list down in the description down below in order by name. But we're starting off with Copper Scavenger. Now this is going to be a huge card. Maybe you've already made a few runs yourself and noticed there's quite a bit of copper laying around. Sometimes you don't notice it because you can't sense it. Or if you've been playing with bots, they've been pointing it out for you. But copper is just about it everywhere. And this is just going to add to that. Now the second card we have right here is going to really benefit from more copper piles. Now there may already be a lot in there, but this additional one is going to really stack up well with this money grubbers. Now every time you gain or every time you pick up a pile of copper or someone else does, you'll gain an additional five copper stacking up to a hundred. Now at first glance, I thought this only netted me probably a hundred between each safe room. But what it does is each time you get an another additional five. So the first time it'll be five copper from one pile. And then the next it'll be an additional 10, 15, 20, and so on. All the way until you get up to that hundred. So you can see the copper piles are going to start adding up pretty quickly at this point. Now lucky pennies. You have a 35% chance to find 35% additional copper. Now this will stack with the money grubber card. So say you get that. 100 stack already somebody picks up 150 it's 250 you'll get 35 percent additional of what that 250 is now one thing to be noted lucky pennies can only be unlocked through completing a challenge it's not a part of the supply line what you'll have to do is go into the jukebox mission protect it for the entire mission without it being damaged and needing repair it's very simple just go into recruit you could two man it easily with a teammate get some barbed wires some uh, pipe bombs plenty of molotovs behind the counter very fun mission at the same point and very quick you'll get it in no time but right after that, Compound Interest. Now this is one of those cards that you can kind of cheese the copper interest with. Now you'll be getting 10% additional copper each safe room based on what your total copper is. Now, say it's one of those moments at the end of a mission, you know, it's not too hairy, it's not too chaotic, you don't have to rush in and close that door behind you. Get all your buddies, your teammates to drop their copper and pick it back up for yourself so you can gain that extra 10% off this. So say they, you know, generally they'll have around 1,000 to 2,000. Each safe room, you should have around 4K, which is going to be perfect for, uh, which is essentially going to add up to about 10K. If they've been picking up the same amount of copper, you know, each one has about 2K. You're going to have an additional 1K each starting inside of that safe room, which means 11K per safe room. That means you've got plenty of money to buy up all the team upgrades, any supplies, any weapons, attachments, anything the team needs. Say there's some moment where, you know, trauma was pretty high on that previous mission. Plenty of med kits for your healer to take off that trauma and still have a surplus on hand. It's going to be a huge benefit. Now, this is when we start getting into supporting the uh, rest of the team, not only through the copper, but through inventory slots. You know, we're taking a bit of health off this, but don't worry, we're going to mitigate that soon. We're adding that one support inventory. You can never have too many of the pain pills, bandages, med kits. So you find some out there as well. It's always better to have more on hand than need more later on. Um, right after that canned goods we want 40 health now big thing about this stamina is not going to be really a worry you're not going to be running too much with this but we wanted this to kind of be a beefier build not a tank build but one that can survive can considering the fact that if you die you're not really picking up that copper you're not really supporting your team all well all that well with that event happening now here and there it may happen but for the most part we wanted to make a lot of survivability with this build and right after that, we're going with surplus pouches, offensive inventory. You know, moments will happen where, say, there's fog out there. Somebody shoots an infected and then accidentally hits an alarm door. They couldn't see or birds or a snitch. Things can happen and having more pipe bombs readily available for moments like that can really help to uh, make a successful run. Now, right after that hyper focus, we've got 50% weak spot damage. We want to help out with the damage a little bit and give a bit more survivability to this. Say there's like a hawker or 
uh, stalker or something something that's a bit easy to kill if you do hit that weak spot even with not much damage added to whatever gun you're using this is going to help in those moments to essentially either save you from getting uh, pinned or some other moment like that or say one of your teammates get pinned and you'll be able to knock them and then quickly kill that if the DPS can't get the angle just immediately before someone else gets pinned because we know some of those hawkers I swear it's like as soon as you knock somebody out of it they're ready to spit right again right after that and it can be an extremely frustrating moment especially in a horde or any other moment like that now right after that body armor we want that 25 percent trauma resistance like i said before we want this to uh, be a survivable build considering you're supporting the team in many different ways but a lot of times you want that copper to really give them that added benefit you want to keep maintaining that surplus of copper so you can keep getting those team upgrades every safe room it's really going to start stacking up at a certain point to where you kind of feel like you're overkill going through these runs now right after that we got silver bullets we're adding more of that 10 percent bullet damage and 150 to bullet penetration just to keep uh you know damage even flow through certain crowds now right after that now you could arguably change this card out say you know you think this is a bit much maybe this is taken away from your copper i personally didn't notice much i was still making 4k between each save room even while this card was active but you could take this off and go over to large caliber rounds it's not going to be that much of a diminished uh, damage or bullet pin, and it could do just as well, but that's up to your personal preference at that point. Now, these next two cards are what you could trade out for anything depending on what you wanted to use. I personally chose the SMG, so I chose Shredder for an additional 15% damage and gaining uh, that pistol damage with the mag carrier. Considering I'm not dual primary, it's an SMG and a pistol, so both of my weapons are essentially getting a buff from this. Now, you could do just about any weapon with this build. This is where that point comes in where you could trade these out. Say you wanted a shotgun build, throw the shotgun damage card in with the move, mobility speed or the ammunition one that's a shell carrier, I believe. Or if you want the assault rifle one, head on over and get that tactical vest for 30% rifle ammo or 10% damage with rifles as well. That could help out a lot. Now, if you, wit if you did go shotgun, I'd suggest uh, throwing out the shredder and probably going with two of the shotgun cards. There's two additional ones. You have shell carrier that does the 30% ammo capacity and 10% damage. And then you also have, where is it? Oh, I'm losing. It's around here. There it is. Rolling thunder. I can't believe I completely overlooked that, but 30%. 35% move speed while firing with the shotgun and 10% damage overall. Those are the two cards I'd suggest if you went shotgun. If you want sniper rifle, again, another one of those moments where you could just trade these in and out. But right after that, we're going for padded suit. 10% damage resistance, 5 health. It's just going to help with that survivability. Ammo belt. Now, this is one of those cards you could arguably push this up into the deck, probably right underneath hyper-focused, if not above it. I did this to kind of keep you as an ammo carrier, say the DPS, the healer, other people in your group. They start running out of ammo, you'll have plenty on hand to evenly distribute between the team. And at all times, you'll be the guy that they're going to for anything that they need. You're the biggest support in this group. Now down in front, another one of those cards, I could argue you could put this higher up if you wanted to, but since you're not the major DPS, and as long as you have you know proper aim you should be able to you know not hit your teammates you know sometimes here and there they'll come in front of your view you won't even notice them you'll be ads shooting things will happen but a lot of times i don't really see this card as full-on necessity certain builds it'll work really well with but if you know how to aim and you know how to see what's in front of you a lot of times it's not going to hurt you but for this build it can be pretty good later on down the road but if you're somebody that really utilizes this card, I'd probably push it up, probably right underneath canned goods or just below the compound interest if that's something you're really trying to utilize. All right, guys, that's going to be uh, the copper deck right there. Hope this will help you out. 
I know a lot of people will really get some huge support from this. I know some people down in the comments have asked about a support deck. Uh, this is finally here. This is the one that I've been looking at. I've worked on this for a couple of days. I've had it kind of sitting off to the side. Used it here and there in more than a few runs. Don't have any gameplay footage for this one. I just didn't really know how to mash it up. And between the different days, it's, it was kind of hard to find the different footage spots where this was happening from. But I can guarantee you each save room you get another 4k you're going to be able to buy up all the team upgrades and have plenty of it, copper left over in order to buy the supplies necessary for everything else even surplus of supplies I mean you could just go all out when it comes to certain save rooms and still have plenty of money left over for the next save room going over <clears throat> But if you have a question about any of these cards, obviously hit me down in the comments below. Ask about anything that you'd like to trade out, possibly use instead. Um, also, go down to the link in the description over at Twitch. Follow me up over there. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, goodness, it is early in the morning. But, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you guys have a good one. And... I'll see you tomorrow for more Back for Blood. Hopefully we'll get into Nightmare and finally finish it. I don't know if you guys saw the stream today, but it's about six hours of not even making it to the first checkpoint within uh, Act 1. Nightmare has been a very brutal, true-to-its-name creature, and we'll try again tomorrow. And I'll try to get that speed run build for you as well so you can kind of like push your way to that first checkpoint. But it feels like there's a whole lot more luck and RNG involved in actually completing Nightmare than there is skill and based on your decks. When it comes down to like just starting a run, only having one or two cards and everything just hits so hard and comes in such a surplus when it comes to special infected and hordes, it does seem damn near impossible. But... We're still going to try it, and as soon as I get it down, I'll have a video for that coming up shortly. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have one of those. But, like I said before, hope you guys have a good one.